Hello and welcome back to Simple or Difficult. In this video, I will show you how to create clay render using Corona Renderer in 3ds Max. Okay, so clay render is a very good way. It's a great way of working with your light or geometry in your scene, okay, without the distraction that comes with material. Okay, in this video, I'm going to show you how to customize your clay render in Corona, how to exclude and preserve materials that you might want to retain its quality for you to be able to do what it is you want to do. All right, so without any further ado, let's jump right in and start creating a clay render. To create a, a clay render in Corona, all you have to do is turn on the material override option. All right, so let me just start my interactive render quick, very quickly. All right, so to turn on the material override option, all you have to do is open your render settings, okay? In the scene tab, in the general settings, you are going to see render overrides over here. Okay, to start your clay render, just turn on this thing by checking this box right next to material override. But now, when I do that, you realize that nothing happened. Everything is still the same way. Materials are still showing very well. There is practically no difference between how it was showing before and how it is showing when I check this thing. That is because I have not selected the material I want to override the entire materials in this scene with. To select the material I want to override other materials with, all I have to do is click on this none over here and then select the material. Now you can select Corona physical material or whatever. I'm going to use Corona legacy material. All right. In fact, for the purpose of this tutorial, I suggest you use it too because there are a lot of things you can still do from here. So when I hit OK, the OK button, as you can see, everything, let me make this thing very big. As you can see, everything is now made up of that Corona legacy material, including my glass, the fabrics, okay, the carpets, um, the floater, everything, the materials has been overridden. Now, this allows you to work with this material in their default state, all right? But you can actually modify this material if you want to. If you want to make it a little bit darker, if you want to make it a little bit glossy or reflective, if you want to even change it to glass material, you can customize this thing. And how do you do that? You do that in your material editor. So when you want to, you know, customize this, anyhow you want to customize it, open your material editor like so, okay? Now you need to bring in this material override into your material editor to be able to edit it, right? So how do you do that? You come over here, okay? First of all, make sure you are selecting your render setup, all right? So now you come over here, you click and you hold, and then you drag it into this place. When you do that, this dialog box comes out, okay? With the instance checked, hit okay. What this does for you, what that instance does for you is that it makes this material here the same as this material here. So when I make changes here, it also changes it here. And uh, ultimately, we see the changes in our virtual frame buffer, like we're seeing it here. So let's go ahead and modify this, all right? So I'm going to double click it, and I'm going to make it darker, okay? I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to reduce this value, like so. You can see. It just got darker in there, all right? So I can decide to add glossiness by adding one here. Everywhere is now glossy, as you can see. You can see the fabrics and everything, very glossy and reflective, all right? If I want to make it glass, I can make it glass, depending on what you want to do. Everything is now made of glass. But then, let me just change it back to, all right? But then you can see my glass is now overridden, but I want to balance my light because part of the reason why we do clear render is to balance our light to, you know, make sure that everything is in order. As you can see, this glass over here is being overridden too, and I don't want that. Okay? If you want to prevent some materials from being overridden, okay, there are ways you can do that, all right? You can do it either from this place or from this place. If you are doing it from this place, that means you are selecting objects you want to preserve their material, like the glass materials, okay? So how do you do that? Is it that you select the object like so? Okay, you select the object like so, and you hit this button right here. Immediately I did that, you find out that the glass material came back to being glass material, okay? Or you can just click here like so, and then you find all the materials that you need. This is the system panel glazing. Okay, I'll just come over here and find all the system panel glazing. See, when I hit OK right now, 
you find out that all the materials of the glass has been preserved just because I use this um, object exclusion to do that. All right. Let's just say I do not want to do that like that. I don't want to do it like that. How else could I have done this? Okay. As you can see, I've restored everything. Everything has been overridden. Okay. Using this preserve button over here, you can click it and enter inside here. You can find out Corona material override settings. These are the type of object, the type of materials you can choose to preserve in the scene. All right. You notice that before we had a light behind this bed and you can find out that now it is being overridden too. Let's say I want to bring the light back. How do I do that? I come over here and I preserve the light. Okay, you can see our light is beginning to shine again. If I come over here and say, okay, preserve glass material, all the glass materials in this scene will be preserved. Okay, if I say, all right, let, let's see. I think I have um, a curtain here somewhere. Okay, that's it. That's it over here. Let me bring it in front of here. You find out this, that the cutting material is also overridden. So if I want to get the cutting material back, all I have to do is preserve opacity. Okay, you realize that the cutting material is back. Okay, and just like that, you can also preserve the bumps in your scene. If you have any bump, I think there should be a bump on this carpet. I mean, displacement and bump. Okay, if you have any bump anywhere in your scene, you can always, you know, preserve them okay so let me just quickly uncheck all this and all this so that i'll have everything the way they're supposed to be now these options here are not the only thing in the render overrides we also have the render hidden lights and um render only masks we're going to be talking about those ones as well all right so when you come to your scene and you press shift l what that does for you is that that hides all the lights you have in your scene Okay, with the lights hidden, you can come over here and you take a look. You can find out that there's no light here. But when I press Shift L again, you can see the light came back. So Shift L, all the light goes away. With this now, you can turn on this stuff and then you render all the lights that are hidden as well in your scene. Okay, that is what this render hidden lights does for you. It renders hidden lights in your scene. Now, all the lights are hidden, but then they are still being rendered. You can even have this option on without having the render override on. You get so if I should turn it on and off or off, it can still affect your scene. All right. So the next one we have here is render only mask. Okay. So when this is turned on, you can see you're not seeing anything. That is because there's something we need to do before we even turn this thing on. Okay. That thing is to come over here and add um, render pass. Now, this tutorial is not about render mask, okay? But I'm just going to show you what you need to do. So, first of all, you come to your render elements. You come over here. You add your render mask pass, which is um, C masking mask. So, when you do that, you say okay. Okay? Nothing is still showing. You might have to come over here. Stop this. You might have to come over here. Turn it on. Still nothing is showing. Now, what is this thing used for? It is used for when you want to, like have a mask okay have like a mask in your in your scene which with which you you can easily select objects you know when you are doing editing okay in photoshop or whatever software you edit with all right so how to do that let's say i want to edit something on this wall this wall is right here that is being selected okay all i have to do is come by here there are various ways you can there are various options but i'm just going to go straight to the point here let's say you go over to the rgb mode Okay, and then let's say I want to use manual selection because this one is actually the easiest method you can use. Manual selection with the word selected, you can just hit plus button here. And when I do that, you find out that in when you have to be over here. If you are here, you will not be seeing anything. Come over here, change it to see mask. Okay, see see masking mask. When that happens, you find out that the wall is being selected in its entirety. All right. I can choose to add the ceiling too. I select the ceiling and then I hit the plus button. The ceiling is added. Okay. If I want to remove the wall, you know how we do. I'll just come over here, open it, select the wall, remove it, and then hit OK. The wall goes away. All right. So with this now, you can save out this scene. And when you go get into Photoshop, you can easily use this to select the part of the object you want to select. All right. So I, I believe we have covered everything in the and uh, 
in the material override section over here. All right, so when you are done adjusting your light or your material, whatever the reason you have, you know, okay, for doing material override, you can now go on back over here and uncheck your material override and then you can now proceed to other things. Okay, usually we do this before we even, you know, apply materials. But if you have materials already you want to see, you can always do it to, you know, cross check some things you know, when you want to. All right. So that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Okay. If you did, please give me a like. And if you are new to this channel, consider subscribing. Not only subscribing, ring the notification bell so you don't miss any of my future tutorial. Okay. Thank you very much for watching this video. I will see you in the next one.